day everyone. Good day my dear grade 11 students. So today, we're going to discuss telephone skills under quarter 3, module 5. Another day, another learning. Our key objectives after this module, the student should be able to, number one, answer and make telephone calls in a professional manner. And number two, Learn techniques to efficiently respond to a customer call. Number three, build a point with the customer and satisfy their needs quickly. And number four, handle a customer's concern or complaint with empathy and understanding. The topic is about telephone skills, the art of listening. So what makes a good listener? So some people are good listeners and some are not. Most people are somewhere in between because each situation is different. But before we continue to our discussion, please watch these videos. No, I'm not kidding you. And in fact, when he showed up, he ate garlic again. His breath was kicking. He is tripping. I told him so many times he did not eat garlic before class. It smelled just like garlic. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Well, anyway, I just needed to vent. I'll talk to you later. No problem. You can call me anytime. Bye. All right, bye. Ellen speaking, how can I help you? Hello, this is Ryan Bardos. May I speak with Natalie Jones, please? One moment, please, I'll put you through. Mr. Bardos, I'm sorry, Natalie's in a meeting at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Yes, could you ask her to call me back as soon as possible? It's pretty urgent. Of course, does she have your number? She has my office number, but let me also give you my cell. It's 472-555-8901. Let me read that back to you. 472-555-8901. That's right. And could you spell your last name for me? B as in Boston. A-R-D as in dog. O-S as in September. Okay, Mr. Bardos. I'll give her the message. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, so let's now talk about the two videos. So what can you say or what did you observe with the first video? Yes, Chantel. Very good, Chantel. So the first video is an informal conversation between a mother or a parent and a teacher. Yeah, so they are using or they use informal words or what we call American idioms. How about the second video? Okay, do you wanna say something, Jay? That's great, Jay. So the second video is all about a conversation between a client and a CSR or customer service representative. Okay, very good. Let us now continue our topic, our discussion about telephone skills. Okay, the art of listening. So what makes a good listener? Like what I've said earlier, what, uh, some people are good listeners and some are not. So most people are somewhere in between because each situation is different. If the topic of discussion interests you, you might make more effort to listen and understand the speaker. If you find the topic of little interest, your mind may wander and you start thinking about what to make for dinner instead of listening to what is being said. Am I right? Listening and attention are even harder to do when you are dealing with telephone conversation. Agree or disagree? Great! So there is a greater chance of distraction because you are not face-to-face -face with customer. So, what can you do to help yourself focus? 
These are some simple steps to help ensure you are giving your customer your complete attention. So number one, do not have any unnecessary paper on your desk. Because you might be tempted to read them instead of listening to the customer. Okay, number two, make sure you have a quiet workspace so you are not distracted by the other staff members. And number three, use a comfortable headset with appropriate volume so you can hear the customer. And number four, if there is a bad connection, get the customer phone back from a different phone or promptly call them back. Do not forget these uh, four steps. The first one is do not have any unnecessary papers on your desk. And then number two, make sure you have a quiet workspace so you are not distracted by other staff members. Number three, use a comfortable headset. And number four, if there is a bad connection, get the customer to phone back from a different phone or promptly call them back. So are you familiar with telephone etiquette? So when a customer calls, your voice represents the whole business. Of course, you're the caller, so you are the business. So you are the representative of your company, so you are the, uh, you represent the business. So how you handle the call can win him or her over for life or send him or her in search of another company. So be careful in handling customers. The caller needs you to be effective and efficient or efficient and effective. So how to be an effective and efficient? Find out how to best help the caller in the fastest way possible. So the caller and his or her needs are your job. He or she is not an interruption. Remember that the customer is not an interruption. And of course, our main objective is to give the best to our customer or to satisfy our customer. So that is our main goal or our main objective as CSR. Do you believe that first impressions are lasting impressions? Great! So when you meet someone for the first time, you leave an impression, either good or bad. So the impression also reflects the company you are representing. The person to whom you are speaking can see your facial expressions or read your body language. So they just rely on what they hear to form an impression about you and the company. Your tone of voice, manners, word usage, and speech patterns all play a role in helping the caller form an opinion of you. As a CSR or customer service representative, you will want to be courteous and pleasant. Sound interested. Use an appropriate volume. Emphasize appropriate words. Don't talk too fast. Speak in a calm voice. Pause when giving information and keep your pitch low. How to be courteous and pleasant? This seems that it should almost go without saying, but be sure that you are being courteous and pleasant. So how is it? Just listen to your voice as you are speaking. The second one, do you sound friendly? Try smiling when you answer the telephone. A smile on your face is a smile in your voice. Just because they can see your smile doesn't mean they can't hear it. So when we are talking on the phone or with our client, make sure that we are smiling. Next is use an appropriate volume. Almost everyone can recall a time when they had spoken to someone on the phone and actually had to pull the receiver away from their ear to avoid a painfully loud caller's voice. Do you experience that? Very good. Sometimes, people across the room can hear the conversation word for word. Why is that? Because they speak too loud. 
This is something rem to remember when using the phone. Speak at a normal volume, in a clear voice. If you suspect that the caller may not be able to hear you, ask if they would like to speak a little louder. So do not forget those. Speak at a normal volume and in a clear voice. Would you like me to speak up a bit, Mr. Jones? Keep in mind the type of phone that is being used. Cell phones and cordless phones sometimes have poor reception. Okay, do not forget that, guys. Okay, so when the, the customer is asking you to speak a little more louder, so you can ask them, would you like me to speak up a bit, Mr. Jones? So there's nothing wrong with that. Next is use a moderate rate of speed. Since using the phone is a regular part of your day, so you may find that you are repeating the same information several times. It almost becomes second nature. And you can do it without really thinking about it. So the problem with this is that we tend to speed up when we are reeling up information that we know so well. We must remember that even if this is the 10th caller today who has asked us for hours of operation, it is the first time the caller is hearing it. For instance, we are open from 9 to uh, 5 every weekday and 9 to 9 on Saturdays. So this example is not helpful or sending a positive image of your company. Nervousness can also lead to speaking quickly. So some people get nervous and rush through the phone call to get it over with faster. They don't like talking to strangers. To help relieve this, take a deep, calming breath before answering the phone. And then, at a moderate rate of speed, or what they call normal to slow, take the call. If you are in the middle of a conversation and you realize that you have been speaking quite quickly, ask the caller if she or he needs any of the information repeated or clarified, or if she or he has any questions. Then, repeat the information more slowly. For you to lessen nervousness, you must or you have to practice this with a friend or co-worker. Often we cannot judge our own rate of speech. So you want to speak slowly enough so that the caller understands you, but not so slow that it makes it hard to listen to. Another thing to remember, pause when giving information. If you are giving information that the caller may want to write down, Pause after each section. You may want to suggest that you will be giving a number or address or catalog number, name, and the caller may want to get a pen and paper. Let us take this as this example. I have the number you need, Mr. Smith. If you would like, I could wait while you get a pen and paper and write the, the information down. The name of the person you need to call is John Carroll. Then pause. K E T T L E. Then pause. Her number is short pause. Area code 489. Pause 356. Pause, three, seven, four, two. Next one is, as a CSR or a customer service representative, you should be sound interested. So the caller will hear this interest in your voice. Let the caller know that she or he and his or her situation are your first priority. What's the inflection in your voice? When say inflection, letting your voice raise 
and fall naturally. When you ask a question, your voice raises at the end. Let me give you an example. Would you like me to give Rob that for you? Some people have learned a particular speech pattern where their inflection raises at the end of every sentence. Another thing you must possess as sales are, of course, so you must know how to emphasize words. Choose important words or phrases to emphasize. And speak in calm voice. Remain calm, no matter what the situation. And keep your pitch low. If you speak in a high-pitched voice, you may want to make a concentrated effort to speak in a lower pitch, as this cares much better over the telephone. So these are some other tips. So the word you use when talking to customers is very important. They form an impression of you based on how you talk. So here are some phrases you can use and some rules you can follow when talking on the phone. So when speaking to someone, say, May I please speak to John? I would like to speak to John Jones. But do not say, is John there? Can I speak to John? When the person you call is not in, say, may I leave a message? I would like to leave a message. Would you please tell him that Susan called? Thank you, goodbye. But do not say, where is she? Tell him Susan called. Okay, then hang up. Bye, then hang up. These are the things you must do while you are on the phone. The first one is, of course, pay attention to the call and listen attentively. Number two, make the conversation short if you can. But don't talk to someone in the room with you. Ask the person to hold on for a time or for a long time. Keep talking to people after they say they have to hang up or chew gum or eat. Suddenly say, I have to go, bye, then hang up, unless it is an emergency. Do you hear the word telephone anxiety? So what is telephone anxiety? So this occurs when we feel anxious or nervous about talking on the, on the phone. We don't want to talk to strangers or customers. We are worried about getting information wrong or not knowing what to say. A large percentage of jobs involve talking on the telephone. So this is something that we can stop us from doing jobs that we otherwise would enjoy or be very good at. So how can we overcome telephone anxiety? Okay, so these are the tips on how to overcome that we call telephone anxiety. The first one is be prepared. Number two, speak slowly and clearly. Number three, practice. Number four, anticipate. And number five, if you are unable to answer any questions, take the caller's name and number, find the information, and call the customer back right away. So how to be prepared? Have a pen and message pad available. Use the commercial message pads, which are specific to telephone messages. Fill in all the blanks and you will have covered all the important information. So that is. And number three, of course, practice. Ask a friend to help you. Scrape it out. Knowing what you are going to say, then takes a lot of pressure off. So how to anticipate? Tip number four. So imagine you are the customer. Why would you be calling the business? What might you want or need to know? Take the time to learn important information. 
So names of people in your organization or have this information on hand. Create a sheet of information that you keep handy. So this may include a price list, your company history, the names and extension of staff, whatever people are asking about. Number five, if you are unable to answer any question, so again, take the caller's name and number, find the information, and call the customer back right away. Then add this information to the sheet mentioned above. So next time someone needs this information, so you will have it. Okay, so this will be a future reference. And number six, if you will not need to transfer calls, find out who does what you are, uh, what on your staff, and keep this handy. For example, Jane in accounting can help can help you with that, Mr. Jones. I'll transfer your call to her desk. If you'd like to write an extension number in your phone book for future reference, so that it is extension 4321. In answering the phone, a phone call, sometimes we do not know what to say and how to say it. So these are some tips on what to say and how to say it. So number one, of course, so you have to identify yourself. Whether you are calling someone or answering incoming calls, identify yourself right away. So why identify yourself? Yes. Yeah, very good. Very good, Ivan. So if you are calling someone, identifying yourself lets them know who you are and what company you are calling from. So this helps them focus on why you are calling. Number two, you will probably only give your first name. So there is usually a policy written in call centers about how you answer the phone or greet the person you have called. Make sure you read and understand this policy. So if you are answering an incoming call, identify yourself and your company, let the caller know right away if you have reached the correct number and to whom they are speaking. So do not forget, so you will probably only give your first name. That is tip number two. Okay, so these are the suggestions for answering the telephone. Good morning, Spyglass Enterprises, Mary speaking. Spyglass Enterprises, Mary, how may I direct your call? Good morning, Spyglass Enterprises, Mary speaking, how may I help you? And these are suggestions for placing a telephone call. Hello, this is Mary from Spyglass Enterprises. I am calling for Tom Long. Is he available? Good morning. May I speak to Tom Long, please? Thank you. Hello, this is Barry from Spyglass Enterprises. So these are suggestions for placing a telephone call. Next is logging the call. So what is what we call logging the call? So logging a call means collecting all the necessary information from the customer to correctly track the phone call. So that is what we call lagging the call. So why is it important to lag the call? So why is this important? Why lagging the call is really important? If you work at a, de a help desk and customers that do not have warranty on a product have to pay for the service, you must correctly lag the calls to show who they are how they are paying and what the call was about if you and if the customer is still under warranty they do not have to pay for the service but an accurate record of the call must be kept for statistics on the products as well as customer records okay so that is why um, lagging the call is very important if you lag a call incorrectly you may cost the company or the customer a lot of money. In logging the call, so what kinds of information do you collect? So usually, guys, when logging a call, you use a software program on the computer. If the first question you ask 
is for the person phone number, you want to enter that into the computer and see if they already have a lab of previous calls. If there's no record for the customer on file, you must complete one uh, one before continuing with the call. So you would ask for the full name and address, telephone number, and possibly even which products they own. Okay, do not forget. So it, well, what, uh, what kind of information we, we have to collect? Again, of course, the full name, uh, address, the telephone number, and possibly even which products they own. So outbound call centers would, you, uh, would use a different kind of logging system based on how far into the conversation they got. They already have the customer's name and phone number because they have made the initial call. Okay, in the outbound call centers. So they must ver verify that the contact information they have is correct before sending the customer the product or more information by, by mail. So that is uh, the task or the job of an outbound call center agent to collect those information. And now we're now in here, no? Closing the calls or closing the call. So when closing a call, you must make sure not to rush the person off the phone. So there are some basic things that must be addressed first. The first one is tell the customer what to expect and when. Number two, tell them what they should do. And number three, thank them for their business. And that's one, of course, it is the most important. And on a positive note. Steps one and two keeps the customers involved in the process and will ensure the customer has a common understanding of what will happen next. The third and fourth steps show courtesy and respect. If the last thing the customer hears before hanging up is an a bit positive statement and a heartfelt thank you, he or she will have a favorable expression of you and your company. Great! Are you guys still with me? Yes, very good. So let us continue. So now, let's uh, go to call monitoring. So how is it? Call monitoring. A good call center has effective coaching that helps the call center worker. In, in our last module, in module one, we learned that there are typically three techniques of coaching used in call centers. The most effective training method is to use a combination of all three. What are those? Okay, do you still remember those coaching? Okay. So we have three, right? The three coaching technique used by call centers. The first one is a drive-by. Okay? When the coach or supervisor overhears a representative response to a customer while walking by. Then number two, of course, we have the side-by-side -side coaching. So the coach or supervisor sits beside the representative usually listening in on a headset to both sides of the call. And number three, Remote monitoring. The supervisor or coach listens to calls from a location away from the representative's workstation. Okay, very good, guys. So um, I'm I'm happy. I'm very much. Uh, I'm very happy because you still remember those uh, techniques or coaching techniques. A big hand for that. Great. In a good call center. The monitoring is done to improve the quality of the work while creating a positive learning environment for the agents. So coaching is very important in a call center for uh, improvement okay, of all agents. To do this, the supervisor looks at different call center processes to measure agents 
performances or what you call the average handling time, the AHT, average stop time or the ATT, average work time or what you call the AWT, average hold time or AHT. So following the stopping schedule and average speed of answer. So those are the things um, must uh, the supervisor must uh, observe. Uh, yeah, for the improvement of the agents. Okay, so we're done. No? So we're done in our discussion. So we're done in our module 5 about telephone skills. Okay, I know and I believe that you learn a lot from this module. Okay, anyone? Any question? None? Any clarification, guys? Okay, so a big hand for that. Okay, for me to know if you really understand our module, our lesson for today, so please answer this uh, a short quiz. Okay, so matching type. Match the following call center process terms on the left with the definition. So I will give you 10 minutes. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations because you got the perfect score. Okay, out of six, you got six, all of you. So I'm very happy for that. I think I'm for that. Okay, so that's all for today. That's all, Stan. Goodbye, class.